SatNav is getting a big quantum upgrade. It can even work without satellites or any outside signals. And the science behind it also opens the door to advanced AI and life-extending drugs. It's part of an accelerating quantum revolution expected to change the world dramatically. Today's GPS has serious problems. One man got into trouble when he used a GPS jammer to stop his boss from tracking him. He regularly drove past Newark Airport and the jammer interfered with its air traffic control system. He was fired and fined $30,000. Ships, which rely on SatNav for safe navigation, also face spoof signals, which are increasing around the world. And boats fishing in illegal waters can fake their locations, as can car thieves sending police after ghost cars. If a satellite navigation network failed, it would disrupt trains, telecoms and emergency services. And as autonomous cars and air taxis arrive, sat-nav failure could be disastrous. If GPS were to fail in the San Francisco Bay Area tonight, all the bridges would shut down because none of the payment systems would work. Nobody would be able to uh, use any of their credit cards, and you're not going to get any money out of the ATM. The hospitals would not be able to work. The electrical systems would fail. Thankfully, the quantum revolution offers two ways to create a self-contained navigation system. A new gravity sensor uses cold atoms trapped in a vacuum chamber. A laser puts each atom into a quantum state known as superposition, with simultaneously lower and higher energies. The higher energy halves are moved up a few centimeters, and the change in their energy states reveals the strength of gravity. The atoms are so sensitive that they react to the tiniest variations in gravity caused by underground objects, enabling a detailed picture of what's beneath our feet. With an accurate gravity map showing the strength of gravity in hills and valleys, a gravity sensor can keep track of our position. Or we can use the same technology to measure acceleration. Gravity and acceleration are closely linked, with gravity being measured by the acceleration it causes. From a known starting point, we can measure acceleration for precise inertial navigation. Your phone already measures its own movement to help keep track of its position, but it drifts over time. It's not accurate enough to rely on. Atoms, however, are incredibly reliable. For comparison, if you were to turn off your phone's internet connection, the clock might be accurate to around a second per day. With an atomic clock, it could be a second per 100 million years. And atoms also offer incredibly precise measurements of acceleration and rotation. They hold all the information to maintain accurate positioning without any outside signals, which will be particularly helpful for the first people on Mars. Precision timing will also help cars to be better drivers than us by allowing them to see around corners. Cameras are being developed to register tiny bits of light that have bounced off several surfaces. They could detect a hidden cyclist or a speeding car at the junction. And they can see exactly where objects are by measuring the time it takes for the light to travel back to the camera. Superhuman AI drivers could save some of the 1.3 million people who die each year in road traffic accidents, the equivalent of around 20 planes full of people every day. And tracking photons through fiber optic cables could save even more lives. Quantum computers promise to dramatically accelerate the discovery of life extending drugs because they can accurately simulate reactions in a way that traditional computers never can. Chemical reactions are incredibly complex and fundamentally quantum, so they can't be recreated in ones and zeros. Quantum computers promise profound advances, from room temperature superconductors to batteries that are 90% lighter, enabling electric flight. But the sensitivity 
that enables the incredible new sensors is a problem for quantum computers where the aim is to remove interference. They typically need to be cooled to temperatures colder than outer space before they can be reliably controlled. And this makes quantum computers extremely large, like traditional computers from the 1960s. Photonic quantum computers can operate at room temperature, harnessing the strange behavior of photons. When a single photon hits a mirror, which lets half the light through and reflects the other half, it doesn't pick a direction, it takes both routes. This creates a quantum superposition with the photon coexisting in two states, like Schrodinger's famous cat. In quantum computers, each photon takes many superpositions, following different paths through a network, like a person walking every route of a maze at the same time. The maze represents a calculation, with each route leading to a potential answer. And cancelling out the wrong answers involves a trick used by noise-cancelling headphones. Each path has different phases. Where they match, they reinforce each other, and where they don't, they cancel out, leaving only the correct answer. Systems like this could be used to simulate chemical reactions, identifying new drugs. Or they could act like neural networks, with the photons trained to follow certain paths. Quantum computers promise to dramatically accelerate the development of AI. Working with probabilities instead of ones and zeros could crack tasks that would take thousands of years on supercomputers. And while doubling the power of a traditional supercomputer requires doubling its size, doubling the power of a quantum computer requires just one additional qubit. The problem holding back all quantum computers is that they make lots of small errors, and as they scale up, the errors become overwhelming. New Quantum is developing a system to create perfectly calibrated photons every time, with precise timing and wavelengths that match down to fractions of a nanometer. And this will power up an array of photonic quantum computers. Here's one approach by Orca Computing. Six photons enter a network which entangles three of them, and the process is repeated, creating a large lattice of entangled photons, like a woven fabric. Then the computation starts. Some of the entangled photons are measured, which collapses their strange wave functions, so they revert to particle-like behavior. But it doesn't destroy the wave functions of the other particles, it only changes them. Measurements are taken, and the changes represent the results. A quantum computer is naturally able to solve these quantum problems, such as modeling the performance of a new drug. It's really hard for us to model these very large molecular chains uh, with classical computers. And essentially that's because there are millions and millions of fundamentally quantum interactions between atoms. And therefore, quantum computers have the power to completely revolutionise the way we design new drugs. You can imagine one day someone might click a button which might change a drug from one form into another. At the moment, that process costs billions of dollars of design, trial and testing. And all of that could go away through much more accurate modelling of those drugs. Quantum computers may also be fundamental for us to understand our own bodies, interactions between and within biological molecules. This might start by helping us understand how the body operates and repairs itself, but it may lead to a greater understanding of the body's most profound tasks, memories, reasoning, intellect, and who knows, one day, even consciousness. The fact that observing particles changes their behavior also enables unbreakable encryption, where any attempt to intercept a message would destroy it. And the same properties allow for radar systems which can't be spoofed or easily detected. But what you really want to know is when can you have a quantum computer and the incredible advances they will bring. Like traditional computers, many components will be required to unlock their full potential. Orca is developing quantum memory, which stores information in the states of atoms, the equivalent to computer RAM 
while it's translated to results that we can understand. Many different kinds of quantum computers are in development and there's no clear front runner. Some of the biggest tech firms are developing superconducting qubits, which require extremely low temperatures. Another approach uses lasers to trap ions in a vacuum, reducing interference. And others aim to craft qubits from silicon chips that could fit in your phone. The chips in your pocket are already close to ordering matter at the atomic scale. In the 1970s, chips contained a few thousand transistors. Today they hold billions, each around a hundred atoms across. And as we approach the atomic scale, things are starting to change their behavior. The photos on your phone are stored as electrons in billions of memory cells. In classical mechanics, the electrons couldn't pass through barriers without breaking them. But in quantum mechanics, they can. Phones are starting to make practical use of quantum effects like this. And progress is being made towards silicon qubits, which could be built by the factories that make our phones. We could even see classical and quantum computing combined in one chip. Global competition is building, and whichever approach wins out, quantum computers will drive profound changes. The world will generate more data in the next four years than it has in the whole of human history. And AI will do extraordinary things with it. Quantum Memories is using quantum computation, also quantum physics theory, to speculate a machine in near future creates alternative nature. When an AI called GPT-3 processed billions of web pages, it surprised us with humor and creativity. Do you think that a cat could pilot a rocket? Yes, if it evolved enough. <laughs> if it evolved enough. <laughs> I like that answer. What should humans do to prepare for the singularity? I think humans should accept it, welcome it, and not try to prevent it. It became so convincing that it was considered too dangerous to release in case it was used to flood the internet with fake news. Processing large volumes of data requires huge computers and an increasing portion of the world's energy supply. And the most important insights are out of reach. Quantum algorithms are waiting for the hardware to uncover major advances in medicine and give birth to advanced AI, which will in turn help to improve the algorithms. So, when will all this come to fruition? It's a question of priorities. Will governments invest in the destructive power of atoms or the scientific progress that will bring true security and extend our lives? The countries that lead the quantum revolution will also jump ahead commercially with inventions yet to be dreamed up. Your smartphone is the product of government investment which sparked scientific breakthroughs, firing up powerful engines of prosperity. While mastering stone, steam and silicon changed the world, the quantum revolution will be like no other. Uh, what if the cat is just an ordinary house cat? Could it pilot a rocket then? No. <laughs> okay. Why not? Because a cat would not be allowed to enter the rocket in the first place. But if a cat were allowed, would it be able to work the controls? And if not, why not? The cat would be able to work the controls, but it would not be preferable. The purr of the engine would be very distracting. <laughs> the purr of the engine.